I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you all for coming on this beautiful, crisp spring night. It's spring yet, is it? Um, yeah, it's spring. It's spring. All right, I want to do, uh, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen regarding uh, the Master Plan Steering Committee, the appointments, staffing, and scheduling. So, as we get right to it. A couple of orders for business on that, but you recall that back in um, September, the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board jointly uh, established the Master Plan Update Steering Committee and provided that you'd have two members from the Planning Board who've been appointed, um, two members from the Board of Selectmen, which that board has appointed, four members of, uh, from town boards uh, whose uh, work represents elements of the master plan, and four citizens at large. Thus far, the Board of Selectmen has actually made appointments of uh, two board members and two citizens at large both of which are subject to concurrence by your board, so it's so it's appointed by both. So, um, so it would be helpful at some point tonight to have your board essentially rat ratify those appointments. And we've invited those individuals here too tonight. If you uh, if you have questions, uh, and there are a set of new appointments that are proposed to be made uh, tonight. With uh, the, we had three new applicants, I believe, two of whom are here with us tonight. John and Ed are both here tonight in, in front row. Uh, Paul uh, Glavy, I, when I last heard, was going to be in Western Mass today. He's able to come to the Selectmen's meeting on Monday night, so we'll, we could interview him there and then, and then and get on with it. But we have two, we have two uh, uh, applicants who have not been appointed yet by, uh, by the Selectmen. Uh, we've got uh, a couple, let's see, who did we have? We have one other appo appointee, uh, Gary, uh, who, uh, who we could vote to, uh, to ratify uh, his appointment. And, uh, now we've got four uh, selectmen uh, here as well. Here's hard copies, one for each. So we're, we'd be all set to interview the, 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 the two candidates who we have to deal with us tonight. Absolutely. Um, we'll start with Ed, or jo John was here first. So I think so. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. Just tell us um, why you want to be on the committee and what you think you'll bring to it. Well, one, I think it's going to be a great experience. And uh, I've never done anything like this before. So uh, it'd be a very big learning experience for me. And it's one way I can really contribute to the community. And I've lived here for since '84, so and uh, I've seen the town change, and I'd like to be a part of the future changes. So you're you're a newcomer. Uh, to some of the people, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, to those of us who who got here in the '80s and '70s, we're still we're almost there. No, you're okay. not quite there yet. What do, you, <laughs> what do you see as the challenges for the town of Littleton in the, in the oh. next ten years? Ten years, uh, probably the expansion. And the new generation of uh, the new people coming in. I'm in the real estate business, and I can see the new people uh, coming in. They're different than we are, and um, so. And also, I see an aging population, and their needs are going to be changing as well. They're growing, and I think some of the town needs some a little bit more accessibility to them. And also, the younger kids are going to be demanding. They're more active in different ways than we were. Uh, they want bicycle paths, and they want all these, you know, and it's kind of like a, what are we going to trade off to do this? You know, we only have limited space, and we have limited parking, we have limited sidewalks, and cost is there, and everything. So it be interesting to see how I can challenge all that and balance it. Well, looking, looking forward, like the, the last time the, uh, uh, the uh, group got together to do a master plan. It was what, in the early 80s, was it? 81, 82? 2002. 2002. Was the last report. Yeah. Was, and I'm thinking back to the first report. Um, but it was, uh, it was quite a dichotomy of people, and they, mm -hmm. they looked at things like where housing should go, and the, one, of the, one of the elements was uh, along the Route 495 corridor wasn't suitable for 
residential housing. So, right. so they looked at um, uh, you know things of that sort, and um, we never really changed the zoning to mm -hmm. to encompass their those goals. How, <clears throat> looking forward, how do you uh, um, see your role as a as a um, in helping shape what those things would look look like 20 years from now? Town well, I, did, look like. I looked at part of the report. It's almost 200 pages. <laughs> so I concentrated more mainly on the housing because of, I'm a realtor. Mm -hmm. And um, But anyway, a 495 a quarter and a Route 2 quarter are fairly noisy. And, 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 and people don't want to live too close to that. But maybe the, the that area could be used for more of a um, you know, small business. Um, or it could be changed into something like... Uh, Activities that younger people can use recreational soccer, rec recreation yeah. soccer fields yeah. or something uh, I know I used to be a soccer coach for Littleton and it's really hard to uh, book soccer fields for kids yeah. And I know as long as you keep the kids busy they don't get into trouble <laughs> So because I raised two kids here. What about the 119 quarter? 119 uh, Is you know, there's a horse farm Proctor Hill my wife rides horses so we used to have a horse there, and I don't know where that's going to go, but that's going to be a large property. And um, I don't know the lady who owns there, what she's going to do with it, but um, if she's going to keep it, pass it down, I don't know. Do you know why it's zoned right now? No, I don't. You, you would expect it to be a farm, <coughs> you know, but... Um, I don't. What What is your um, your thoughts on on clusters huh? clustering houses together, with, uh, cluster zoning, and and op options for um, uh, different types of housing? Well, generally, the the future trend is to uh, put people closer together with smaller properties. Ecologically, that makes more sense, and there's also development opportunities for contractors to put this together hmm. uh, and it also conserves land and resources however um, it does create the density issue because now you have to increase the schools and everything else so it, it's I think it's a challenge for me is to figure out to learn all these things to figure out how we balance all this out that makes reasonable sense so. she just brings up a good point so for this master plan steering committee is somebody going to sort of educate all the members and how our zoning does <coughs> work, what open spaces, where all the stuff we have on the books, so when they start having these discussions, it's somewhat informed about what we already have mechanically and sort of how it works? There will be a point that you can reach that once you've hired <coughs> your consultant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, and what the committee will be focusing on, for starters, is, um, is putting together a request for proposals procurement document to be able to hire a consultant you'll want to focus on what the scope of services is with you know which elements of the master plan do you want to do and when, once you and, and until you actually bring that consultant on board there won't be anyone to be giving you a Assistant. primer on how to do it okay. so. yeah the consultant usually carries quite a bit and the advantage of the steering committee is reaching out to the public. The steering committee interacting with the consultant? Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, awesome. You know, one of the concerns is having a public process and, and reaching out to the community at large. Mm -hmm. So it's good having some new blood, uh, you know, uh, and being able to reach out and get more people, and more uh, viewpoints, right. and also being out in the community and people can talk to you. So, you know, have it balanced, mm -hmm. which, which is a good thing. What about time? Do you have time to dedicate yourself to this? It's going to take a while. Yeah, I figured it would. And also a 200-page document it probably has to be broken down and taken section by section by section. And then uh, And you're going to do that for out. us, right? <laughs> I'll try. No, but I mean, I it's want a yes or a no. It's oh, going to yes. involve. <laughs> Good, you're right. It's going to involve you know, meetings. It's going to involve right. probably a year and a half to maybe two years, maybe who knows, even longer, depending on how often you meet and stuff. I, right. really, originally, it took us a couple of years to, to draft it. Well, admit, I'm involved with other things as well. And, and last yeah. one was Sir Frey Laborious took too long. Oh. That, that's one of the concerns mm -hmm. of trying to uh, shorten it a little bit, have a little more focus, is be to our advantage. 
and there were some problems, some funding, and got stretched out way, way beyond way one had intended. So hopefully this time around it's a little bit different. Okay. Well, the Massachusetts Planners Association has meetings and, and seminars, uh, I mean, uh, not meetings, but uh, seminars that are open and available to uh, other town planners to, uh, to learn how uh, what the new concepts are and, and what the trends are going. Are, are you willing to, to go out nights to educate sure. yourself on, on sure. stuff like that? That's great. And so. do you have any questions of us, <laughs> or the selectmen? Uh, like I said, I don't know enough yet <laughs> to ask the questions, but as they come up, I'm sure I will. That's great. They're good comments, and I've chatted with you before, so that feels good. Okay. Well, any other questions? No. I'm good. Select my question. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Are you Jeff's dad? Hmm? Yes. Yes. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> 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 I know Jeff. Call him Beef. He's a good kid. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> what are you looking to know from me? Okay, well, so um, I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my appointment to the Economic Development Committee. Um, and that um, was uh, requested of me um, by a member of the, of, a board, of the Board of Selectmen at that time. Um, and I said, you know what? Yeah, I need to do my civic duty. And that's why I was there. Um, and it sounded like a pretty interesting thing to do. I knew, learn, I knew I'd learn a few things, and I did. Um, so, and I actually had a lot of fun doing it. It was a good challenge. I um, think I met some good people. And um, so I'm just kind of continu continuing on that, that role. And that's, you know, the whole crux of it for me is community service. You know, I think everybody's got to ante up at some point in their life and do something give for something the, back. give something back, exactly. So, um, I have a little background in arch landscape architecture. I was educated as a landscape architect. I did the, you know, the grand tour of Europe. So I've seen a lot of different landscapes. I've lived in different places in the country. Um, and I've worked in different places in the country. So I've seen all different uh, you know, archetypes of homes, different you know, ways things are laid out, uh, how community planning kind of takes effect on the ground when it's complete. Um, I've uh, had a lot of experience just in, I think we all have, but in some really great pedestrian spaces. And uh, in reading the master plan, now I didn't, I'm not a student of the master plan yet, and obviously um, if I get appointed to the committee, I will have to make myself a student of the existing master plan. Um, I think it's a good start. I think the, the old master plan provides a lot of uh, fuel for the new master plan. And I don't think that it should be completely set aside. I think it's a good basis for you know, where we should start. Um, I looked at the, uh, the goals that were kind of set forth in that first master plan. The preservation of open space, I think is, they've done a pretty good job on that. Um, I think our community services, uh, you know, police, fire, um, the electric department, of course, the dump, I think everybody's doing a really good job. Everyone acts in a you know, highly professional manner. Um, I think where the master plan right now is falling a little bit short is that in a lot of the new subdivisions, you take a look at them, and that could be easily the same subdivision you might see in South Carolina. It might be seen in Illinois. It might be seen anywhere. It kind of gives us that anywhere USA feel. Um, so part of, you know, one, one of the main things in the master plan was the preservation of Littleton's unique characteristics. Um, I don't have an answer for how we reach that at all. I think that's going to have to come out in the wash, and it's going to take some very skilled professionals. I mean, the steering committee can do what we can do to make that happen. Um, but we're going to need some people, some professionals who do this for a living mm -hmm. that have hashed this out in other towns that know what they're doing to make that happen for us. And I think that's going to be a real critical point. Yes? Where would you grow up? I grew up in western New York. Youngstown, New York, to be exact. I spent a week there one afternoon. <laughs> what made you pick Littleton to live? Um, my wife. Smart man. <laughs> how, how long have you been in Littleton? We were here for a brief stint in 99 uh, to 2000, and then um, we just moved back in 2010. 
Kids. What brought you yeah. back, though, besides your wife <laughs> telling you to? What, uh, we, li we lived in, there? to be honest, that, that's it. Um, I, I lived in Vail, Colorado. I had the opportunity to take over a, a fairly large landscape business. Um, there were some issues with the ownership of the company, but it was a really good opportunity. And, and um, I had met my wife around the same time that we were there. The company was making this offering, and she's, you know, we decided that we liked each other. And she said, we're moving back to Massachusetts. And I said, yes, dear. Yeah. That was the advice that was given to me by a very wise man. He said, yes, dear, is what you say. So, so you take orders well, then, uh, yeah, sometimes. You don't take many stands. Oh, no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've, got, you've got a great, sounds like you've got a great background for this. Um, do you're, are you prepared to devote the time that you're going to need to, to not just learn about our master plan, but learn about new techniques and learn about uh, the, you know, the, the townspeople? Yep. Yep. You know, there's, there's other master plans that we'll be studying. It's going to be a lot, a lot of homework. Yeah. Now, I'm a landscape contractor, and this is what I told the folks on the Economic Development Committee. I said, when, you know, it's April, May, and June, <laughs> I'm probably going to be a little scarce. I can make meetings, but I'm probably not going to be much of a foot soldier in those months. Like, I just got to be honest. I'm not going to tell you I can do something that I can. I've got to make a living, and I make, you know, probably 70% of my money in those three months. So, um, well, I think we're all, we're all in that, but we all have a job. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um. <coughs> oh, most of us have a job. <laughs> Jesus, here we go. All right. um, what do you see the challenges for the next 10, 10 or 15 years with Littleton? Well, there's growth pressure. There's gentrification pressure. I mean, the housing is getting more and more and more expensive. <coughs> and, uh, you know, truth be told, people that own that land, they have rights to do what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be a real battle. When I was in Vail, Colorado, they had a design review board up in Beaver Creek. And, you know, you try telling the CEO of Home Depot that he can't do something that he wants in the land he just spent millions of dollars purchasing, there's a fight there, you know. So um, I think we have to figure out a way to guide the development of town in a way that is consistent with what the, what, what the goal is. And the, over, the overreaching goal that I saw reading the plan was to maintain the rural character of Littleton. You know, kind of maintain that small town feel. If I'm wrong, you feel free to tell me. But, um, however, we still have to pay for police, fire, schools, and the demand is ever higher on those as you build. So now you need more business to help offset those taxes. Where do you put them? How do you, how do you bring all this to the table without, you know, screwing the whole thing up, for lack of a better term? So you've got to be very careful. The, right the problem is everybody comes to Littleton. They love Littleton. They want to lock the door behind them when they get in. Yeah. And that's just not happening. Everybody's, Littleton is, is at a crossroads. We're, yep. we're expanding. We're growing. People want to be here. IBM's here. We have yep. good, we're getting good companies to come in and it's causing, absolutely rising growth that we never thought we were going to see right right and it's so going it is a it, challenge so one of the things that was a consistent um, theme when we were going through the economic development plan was um, you know the growth is going to happen you can't avoid it you can fight it all you want but when somebody owns a piece of property and they want to do something with it and they have the money the only choice is to work with them we can do our zoning, we can do whatever we want to do, but you're going to have to do, in some way, you're going to have to do something. Because if they own the land and they're planning on putting a company on it. Really going to need to have, like, an education session about zoning. Oh, absolutely. uses, how all that works. Because yeah. that's it's not entirely true. If you zone residential, you can build houses. Oh, absolutely. If, if, somebody own, if somebody owns that land, I understand zoning. Yeah, I, I get that's, it. Yeah. But, you know, not, they're not going to go stick a factory behind Shaker Lane School. Correct. It's not going to happen. I understand. Unless that. we change the zoning. Unless you change the zoning. Mm -hmm. but Which is what the master plan may, maybe is going to. May recommend. Recommend or not recommend, right? Right. right. That's, that's, what, a that's what it's all about. Decision and, than just and, 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 and as you all know, if political conditions in a town are correct, zoning can change for the better or for the worse. You know, somebody gets the right person on a board and it can, you know, so um, it's... Zoning is definitely good. We can do what we can do with that, for sure. But it can change. And that's, you know, 
I don't know if there's anything you can do in a permanent fashion, but, you know. What have any other questions? Say we hire him. <clears throat> now, you have good, good breadth of uh, experience, which is helpful, but, you know, you won't be necessarily doing zoning. It's more conceptual right. and broad. Yep. And so, yeah, there will be expertise from the consultant who will have done this. Yes. And one possibility is yep. the regional planning agency, which might be a, a, a good solution. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine in the, in the beginning part of this, there's going to be a pile of data, and we're going to say, oh, geez, how do we weigh through all this? And so we're going to have to, you know. You'll get spoon things. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, beautiful. people learn on the job. Oh, absolutely. And the yep. advantage is bring new people in and a variety of folks, so it isn't yep. just lopsided. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see that people are actually interested. You know, it's been a oh, while. Oh, yeah, this is cool stuff. And then, um, this is good stuff, nice you know. Do you drink? Who, me? I'm Did you drink? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a geek. That's what it is. I'm, I'm just playing with you. It's That's cool okay. Stuff, right? I, don't, I don't know about yeah. <laughs> should, should we are? We are? Well, is there a vote needed vote presently this orders. evening? Yeah, for the two candidates that are present? Vote, uh, both of your boards to we'll appoint these two candidates. That, that would be a first order of business. Second order, as I mentioned, would be that, you, that you, we would need your board to ratify the four yeah. appointments that the right. selectmen have already made. I would, I would move that we move that we, uh, we, we approve approve the other four candidates. Hey, have the selectmen asked questions? Know the other four people. Right. Do you have any questions? Pardon me, you, I never did get your name. Which? Ed Poikendall. Did, does the board have, the selectmen have any questions? Right? We had the yeah. pleasure of seeing that at the yeah. Economic uh, okay. Development Committee. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem with the four people that, the two that you've already, the yeah. two that we have. Which I feel it's not fair to Mr. Glavy, but Mr. Glavy's been on all kinds of boards, yeah. and it would be nice. Coming in to see the selectmen. On the but that'll be the fifth. You don't have a spot. If we vote these four, you won't have a spot for them, right? Yeah, no, we do. But there is. Yeah. Fact, yeah. There's an extra spot. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's, uh, one in short. fact, one in short. fact, after, uh, even after Paul's uh, appointment, there would still be one vacancy. Oh, okay. so then yeah, you're all set. I mean, all, yeah. all these people seem to be good as good yeah, at coming yeah. forward. It's nice to have work. <coughs> 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 so, so what do we need to do tonight? Is it to, to vote those these two candidates it's in? It's two and the two that the selectmen have voted. <laughs> And we have some Aaron, other folks here who... Aaron's about to say something. Yeah, uh, he's a part of the firm. Excuse me. Uh, that, that's also in your memo. Um, but um, to, if you so choose, appoint the two nominated, um, two gentlemen that just spoke, um, the, and ratify the appointments the that four. the selectmen, the four appointments that the selectmen have made. Um, the list is on, um, actually, Don has that sheet. Yeah the, most, yeah, the motion has, in fact, all the proposed motion has all three names in, in it. And I'm, we don't have, yeah. we're very comfortable with Mr. Glavies as we move for a long period of time, so I mean, this board doesn't see any necessity of interviewing. The, the selectmen would be prepared to have the motion be all three names as printed. Including Paul Glavies? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yep. So you can take care of that. So Paul Glavies, John Byfield, and Ed Coyle-Pendall. Coyle-Pendall. Coyle 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 it won't take you too long. Okay. I'd like to take a motion to um, nominate it to approve them for the uh, Master Plan Steering Committee. Sure. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the two that you've already? Nine. In favor. Okay. And then that's what you're... One of those that we vote to appoint John Bellfield, Edward Clinton-Dahl, and Paul Clavey to indefinitely charge the Master Plan of the Steering Committee. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Very opposed. Very good. Thank you. And then the second motion that the planning board should make, it's in italics under additional information. You want to, you want to, uh, to approve the uh, appointments of uh, Michael Selden, Joseph uh, Piccicello, uh, Gary LaCroix, and Mike Fontanella. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 So there's seven, one opening step. We've got 11 uh, appointees on the 12-member committee, and we just went ahead to convene our first meeting. That's great. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. And the last one is should somebody we'll, sign we'll, up. We'll continue. We'll, we'll re-advertise. Uh, we'll, we'll post and, and try to get uh, the one remaining. Now, without, a, without a committee meeting uh, scheduled. Um, how do we... How do we schedule the first meeting so that the 
it can actually so we're gonna, get going. We're uh, going to contact all of you who are on the committee and see uh, with uh, some suggested dates uh, and maybe a doodle pad or something on you know the way you pick convenient you, uh, dates. Also, uh, uh, assign Mary to be the set. Yeah, the second or attempt to assign her. Yeah, the other matter that the Board of Selectmen had, had voted uh, back on uh, earlier in um, March was to request that your board provide staff support for the Master Plan Update Steering um. Committee. And that, um, in particular, that we felt that the committee needs to have some staff support. You can't, you can't right. go forward can't move without some staff support um, and that it's in it's a planning project if ever there was one and it would be very helpful to the cause if you could assign staff support well, here the payment for her is comes out of our our uh, this over and above what's, what's well, we, should, we can talk we can talk about that that if it's within that if it can be done within the existing budget fine if you need additional Hours to allocate to to be able to get all the work done. Let's let's talk. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the markup. Yeah. But, but there was talk of taking some of the funding off the master plan allocation. Uh, you know, at least it was somewhere in the tax. Karen, are you going to have the time? We would love to have this conversation. <laughs> I don't think so. Now's the time or place for it. Should we talk about? Should we talk about it? Sure. Let's yeah. We'll go into executive session and talk about that. Well, later. it's it's your it's your Business, but we just wanted to bring you the 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 request, and we will be very supportive of whatever solution you come up with. Is it to have uh, an alternative for support? We want our options beyond just assigning. No, I don't have another option. Well, we we got to a point two, correct? No, we're talking about staff support. No, I'm, I'm asking. We yeah, appoint, you know, members. we we and you guys approved how many? Two. 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 But you guys, you know, all right, all right. I was just thinking maybe we'll just read. I think approach this is let's scope it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to get a steering committee meeting before too many more weeks go by. We can scope it, and you have a discussion. With you. you know what the workload on Marin is right now. Um, we're going to put it. We do. I mean, this money meeting is approved. Going through this doesn't all need to go to a professional um, a consultant. We think we need some internal organic support. And some of the money comes out of that. Certainly, from my perspective, yeah. it's, it's available funds to use something like that. Identify the need, scope it, and then uh, grade against it. So it, be, it may well be that if you talk to the RPA and make you see, they might be able to tell you, okay, it's this sir chunk because they've already done this. You know, I mean, they they can tell you, and that's up really up to Marin whether she wants to do yeah, it. It's, it's, she has the conversation that, that right. you all you all should have. It's. Um, and we just wanted to bring the question and the the, uh, the, the pledge for support for whatever you can I think up. it's going to go through mine no matter what. On, on keeping the whole board up to date and everything else like that. It's just a question of yeah. you're going to need somebody to take notes and to uh, do all right. the and facilitate. However, and however that works. And how I mean, are we going to do that? That there are uh, you know, other on-call people that we can have do the minutes. That's probably the, the most onerous part of it. Uh, I think having Marin's participation. Other staff will be attending the meeting. I'll certainly be at meetings. I guarantee you I'm not going to take minutes, but but that we'll have plenty. There will be plenty of, uh, of the professional staff that will be at the meetings, but for the continuity sake, that it, I think there ought to be a key staff person, then it's your call on who that is. We will have yeah. that Great. Thank you. Um, that's it. That's it. Okay. You're off to the... Move to close. Yeah, we have the updated... We're going to talk oh, about the illusion, uh, inclusionary zoning. Do you want to stay for that a little bit? Or <clears throat> while your board's still here? Or are they they're all leaving? No, they have a school community. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to stay here. Glad you Thank started. You Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, before you take it. Where's the Congratulations. Yeah, Rich Crowley. I have the email he sent out on the end of the website. Meet and greet your, your opponent when he was playing. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. He's an asshole. Thank you.
Hey, my phone. <laughs> Right. He, he was the one that was behind that. Of course. Um, it would matter to establish it, even though it's not seven. Well, why don't we do board business oh, first? <laughs> no, actually, let's get uh, Keith out of here. It is 7 30. We'll, we'll do that. Stay for the public hearing. All right. When uh, Chrissy comes here. Okay. Just so, just so if there are any late breaking developments, I can update them in the town meeting report that gets mailed out to the voters. So while we're doing that, we can talk about the inclusionary. So Myron got us all back the minutes from, we had a meeting the other morning um, about proceeding forward with the inclusionary zoning. Um, mm -hmm. um, oh, you were there? Yeah, I was there. Okay. Um, so we're going it. to have another meeting on the 28th. Yeah. At, um, just eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have any? Nope. Nobody. Just going to be asked <laughs> one last time. Just going to be asked one last time. Right. right. And then um, just before our next planning board meeting, we're going to invite MAPC here at. Well, Jenny said before earlier she's not available on the 14th, um, but that would be a good time to bring a draft to the board. Okay. So we're trying to get our homework done so that we're all kind of on the same page before we start going down the road with the consultant and kind to of try to figure out what Littleton does or doesn't want and what people are going to want to hear at the town meeting because that's where it's ultimately going to be cashed out because that's where people spend the most, you know, listen the most and spend the most time. It's a, right, unfortunately right. a town meeting. Well, it's a yeah. public meeting. That right. We will be doing public meetings hopefully all summer long on this. Yeah, but <clears throat> one shot. But, um, mm -hmm. So our next meeting is the 14th. Um, next regular planning board meeting is May 14th. 14th. Yeah. And we're posting it on the 28th, so if anyone else wants to come, it is posted, so. Yeah. Great. That'll be after the election. Um, yeah, the 14th is, but yeah. the um, 28th is before. For what? Our next meeting. 28th of April. April. We have another meeting with uh, us about the inclusionary zoning. Call up here. I thought you said you were. That's what we did no, that day. I just got there you are to Chicago. Yeah, thanks. I'm coming home. I'm cutting my tanning period short just to come out for it. I've been working, so it doesn't. It's I different. work down there. It's different. Ooh. Fix my slice. I don't slice anymore. Doesn't count. What time? 8 a.m.? Yeah. Um, I'll be there. Some someplace else. M and M's. No thanks. Mark your mark. Yep. Anything else? Anything come in the mail? Um, did you say you sent a memo about people wanting to go see uh, the point? Sam's going to have little tours. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to go see it? Um, yeah, they want to take a few minutes to figure out what your schedule looked. Um, Sam offered um, to, rather than do a dog and pony show at a meeting, it would be much more interesting to go out and do a site visit. So he suggested um, some warm weekend. Weekend? Yes. <laughs> about like 7 a.m., seven, between 7.15, 7 7.30 on like a Monday, Tuesday. Can we, we might as well do a lot release now while we have a You have to minutes. schedule it to make sure you leave early because the lights there, if you come from my direction, takes you 15 minutes to get there. Which way? Coming from the west. Down 119. Yeah. What if you boop back around on uh And who's the brainchild who decided to rent that big giant truck to put out the, the, the waddles? They stopped traffic for two and a half hours to put 150 feet of waddles down with a big truck and two cruises. Not too bright. What's a waddle? It's a big round thing that keeps for soil erosion when they tear up, tear up the road. It looks like in the resurfacing it. On one the erosion fence. It's, it's it protects it's the geranimals in the water. Yeah. And how big is it? Snake 10 point. inches in diameter, you can buy them for, for almost nothing and install them in 15 seconds, but they had a better job at two cops. And yeah, that, that's the uh, highway department's, well, the state Mass DOT's um, resurfacing project. Well, great, but 
That's our tax dollars at work. Jesus. Okay. Let's do the lead. The lot one has to go two miles. Actually, Tim. Tim's here. When's you want to do? Mm -hmm. Let's do it right this second. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we'll get it done. Well, we have five minutes. We don't know what to do with. Right now. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, this is the. You have a request for a lot release. Uh, <laughs> Dan Holmes uh, sent a letter describing um, what it is he's looking for, but. Um, it's for the mayor, Basically, right? they're selling yeah. lot H, which is, or it's a lot for yeah, building H, which is uh, the hotel. Didn't we already do right. um, in order, <laughs> right. In order to do that, um, technically, they need you need to release vote to release the lot. Mm -hmm. um, the paperwork is here, so. Sounds right. Okay. You need to vote to release <clears throat> lot seven of the definitive subdivision plan, and it's also known as lot twenty of the land court plan. So I'll entertain a motion to, to release lot seven of the definitive subdivision plan and lot 20 of the land court plan to, who are you releasing it to? Releasing it from the subdivision covenant. Okay, from the subdivision covenant. Period. Period, that's it. You don't want to know who it's getting. I'll second. I'll second. All right, so, so moved. Who, who, uh, first, who made the motion? I'm entertaining a motion. Oh, I'll, I'll move. I'll so moved. Jerry second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Short. Do you need to bring Starbucks coffee to us or anything else? Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Is, it, is it open tomorrow? tomorrow is Keith going to be the first one there? Cut the no, ribbon, get the first cup? That, that, that question it must have been asked. I'm not, I'm not making this up. I'm let you in with that times because times Keith wanted it. That was the little perk. When is the Starbucks open? We did it just with Keith. He's a Starbucks guy. And the, um, and the hotel? Uh, as far as I know, now that the lot is released, uh, we can schedule a closing and the machines uh, idling. On the Waiting. So we're holding you up. Oh, yeah. Sign fast. <laughs> when we, uh, well, we just released it. Yeah, yeah. The release of this doesn't release them from any responsibility to apply to the rest of the properties, the signage and the, all the other stuff. It's just, no. Nope. Correct. The, uh, the special permits would go with the land. But they would. Conservation the same thing. So conditions <laughs> now transfer to the hotel once we close the name. Did you sneak any in on them? What's that? Add, add a few more. Who's the notable? Is, he, is, this, is his walkthrough going to be a, like a phasing yep. update as well? Jed can, like, uh, can yeah. notarize Pace. it. Pace. Yep. I think he'll answer any questions you want. Or... Or when you, when, when do you want to do? Do we know what restaurants are going there? Or you... We swear not to tell you, but nobody watches this. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do. Is there an idea of what's going in there? So. Um, I can tell you definitely the hibachi place, which maybe you already knew, hibachi Chinese food sushi. I don't know the name because it's a local user. They have a restaurant in um, Stoneham called Tulip, but it won't be, I don't think it's named Tulip here. So, so it's like a Japanese steak, those kind of deal? Yes. But it's got all the, all the Asian favorites, if you will. So you make a typical Chinese food menu, hibachi so steakhouse, sushi. Yep. Yep. All right, so there's one. There's one. Tavern on the Square, I think everyone yeah, yeah, knows too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we haven't fully signed a lease yet with the with calling it the chef centric uh, restaurant. From hopefully we steak seafood focused, but again, local user, no name brand. Uh, the restaurant tour lives in Groton. I'm nice. familiar with the area. Love the area. Um, mm -hmm. That would be specific. So for, for home viewers, we're we're talking about the point. Yes. Yeah, I'll fire you. <laughs> oh, there's more than that, and especially oh, on demand. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I give, do we get residuals from this? You, know, like, you don't. Do do no, but them? whenever I miss a planning board meeting, I watch it the oh, next morning. Right. Oh, oh, boy. Oh. We're well. supposed to get ratings back from LCT. <laughs> Yeah, How do, we do you want to give us an update on the, on the status on of the construction? One of the highest requests of the <laughs> we are. That's what what yeah, when did that start? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Gentlemen, we're about to hear a status of the construction. Sure. Uh, quick status construction. Is sure, I'm sure if you've driven by, you can see buildings. Um, uh, D is well on its way, uh, and building E is sort of behind it. I'll just throw up just a quick site plan to refresh your memory. 
these two other buildings have, have caught up uh, to F. Um, this is the hotel, which is now a different configuration than planned. Is starting, like I said, uh, they want to break ground uh, next week, assuming everything goes well. Um, building G, also we anticipate uh, breaking ground um, in May at the latest. Um, we have design pricing for and whatnot, so it's, it's, it's ready to go. Uh, and then uh, building C, if people follow, um, probably sometime in June. Uh, and that will sort of round out our phase one uh, construction. And what will B and uh, G and uh, B be? I mean, G and C be? Uh, G, C houses Tavern on Square, um, is where Tavern Square will go. Um, and G, right now, we have a, um, uh, a bank user with a bank drive through coming through here. And one oh. vacancy that we're trying to. Um, Great. We had a. Um, you thought we didn't have enough banks. <laughs> <laughs> now we're really going to do Switzerland. We are, we are holding out for one more restaurant uh, uh, user here, and we, we've sort of made a decision to. Um, we had someone uh, with a signed LY that is, is sort of dragging their feet because we're new to the area. But we're gonna we're kind of waiting until the building goes up because whenever the building goes up, all of a sudden people say like, oh, it's it's that one right in front and to realize the value in it. So, yeah. What's the yoga place? What about uh, K&L? Uh, K&L, we will be um, starting some earthwork as well this construction season. So we got to do uh, an export off of there for L is the um, cinema pad. Um, so we're doing artwork there. Um, we are hopefully targeting to have a pad ready uh, towards the end of the summer. Um, and while the cinema goes up, we'll be doing the rest of the site work around it as well. Um, so we have to, we still have to finalize a couple of details on that deal, but everything is, is um, so ready to go. We're moving, we're, again, once it dries up a little bit more, uh, the site contractor this morning said he's looking to start before May 1st to get some Moving right there. So is your target completion date 2016? Uh, I would say um, we'd like to have the phase two level uh, complete by the end of 2016 for uh, site work and pads. Buildings may still be going up. Um, we, we're, our goal is to get them started. Um, so, uh, by, so by 2016 is complete. Yeah, I'm sorry, my year off from my head. So we'll, we'll have we'll have, hopefully have this, the pads and the site done 2015. Building will carry over 2016, um, and then uh, Building J. Although we, we are talking to some people about Building J, maybe a, a little bit further down the road there, but it certainly pad will be ready. We should be building going up on the top. Nice. I like you. You at least give us some sort of an answer, <laughs> not like uh, your your boss. Right, right. Goes <laughs> around in circles, right? Does that with me in the office too? Can I have tomorrow off? Well. You're on TV. Whatever. He always gives me the day off. <laughs> so, do you want to try to schedule a site visit, or do you want to wait till the weather warms? Or I think you want to wait till it's a little nicer, the weather warms. Maybe next month we set one up. But okay. That time, more will be open too, right? More will be open. Yes. Yes. So okay. why don't we? So why don't we in our in our May set one up? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Terrific. Sam's going to be at the meeting on Monday night to talk about the plan for uh, liquor license. Just to schedule them and get get moving and set aside the licenses needed. Great. Good to see things moving. Awesome. They're moving. Then we get busier. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. It's a good game. Update. Okay. All right. We have a 7:45. Continue public hearing on 511 Goldsmith Street. Mixed use, special permit, water resource district, special permit, site plan review, 14 unit residential development. It's almost like the Pavlovian dog deal you got going here, honey. You come in front of the board, you bring candy. I've been candy to everybody. It's curious. Just... He's mad because he already ate his candy that he bought for himself. Oh, I asked to share, but you didn't want any. Spell at Board of Health, and we ran around the building to all the boards looking for some hard candy for them. So, after that, I brought candy to every meeting. What flavor do you want for me? Yeah. What? Sorry, the paperwork for the Oh, yes, that's right. 
Here you go, Marin. Anybody? There it is. What? There it is. There it is. You at least finish up the, uh, the details. We had a few outstanding details when last we met. We might as well get those out of the way first. Is something different with you here? Um, no sense. You're trying to connect the drainage now through the nice. post office. Is that uh, the latest? Yeah. So what we did was we redesigned the drainage. Um, we uh, we identified what the drainage actually does and who owns it and where it is on the lots. So the drainage is actually on the post office lot. It's not on Tedeschi's, and it connects to another catch basin. Again, on the on the property of the uh, of the post office at this corner. So what we're proposing is by putting up this this wall and catching all of the water in this catch basin, uh, there will be no flow to this existing catch basin anymore. So we'll convert that existing catch basin to a manhole simply to, just by putting the um, uh, frame and grate over the top and use our existing pipe connection into that uh, catch basin. So we're really not changing that catch basin really at all except we're just putting a lid of the uh, frame and grate on it. Um, and th this area will no longer collect any water so it doesn't need a catch basin frame and grate anymore. So. Um, and we have a proposed easement to maintain that entire drainage line in the catch basin in the, in the main building. Okay. okay, and um, Luke did call and said that he talked with Jonathan. Um, he's fine with changing the existing catch base to manhole as long as um, it doesn't create a ponding condition, and they'll be able to tell that on site um, before they do any work. It was under too much snow to make that determination, and he just he still recommends um, getting the easement. Yeah, the easement would take care of the grading if, if the grading were necessary. Okay, that's the easy issue before us. We now have a more complex issue before the board that we need to talk about. It's getting back to the mixed use of this property. Um, <clears throat> we had Chris weigh in, Chris Heap, town council weigh in on uh, whether or not this is really a mixed use. Um, and he sent us a letter back and I believe you guys have copies of it. Yeah. And the board has to decide whether or not this really is a mixed, something that will fit in the in the, the district it's um there really is no mixed use to it there's no commercial component to it um how, how does the board what is the board's thoughts on this issue because we have to decide one way or the other if we're going to go forward with this i'm sorry me i'll start with richard which is telling me if he wants to work his way up this way well i read chris's response and and um I'd like to hear from Chris himself to sure. help us, help guide us through this explanation. Sure. Um, I was asked the question uh, not too long ago um, of whether this proposal uh, meets the definition in your zoning bylaw of what is a, a, of a mixed use, which is a defined term um, and a, a new, relatively new use uh, that can be permitted to town. The definition of mixed use requires the presence of both residential uh, re residences and uh, a commercial use. And that commercial use can be uh, any number of things, but as far as I can tell, with respect to this proposal, it was just exclusively um, a residential use. Therefore, from uh, the information I was presented, it did not appear to be have the necessary commercial component to is one of the required parts of a mixed use under the line. With that, I would like to get the uh, permission of the board and ask um, Council if, uh, Sherry, if, um, what your opinion is on this, too. When we started this process, we presented to a small group of people, um, mm -hmm. including the Housing Authority and Ms. Bergman, as well as presenting it to this board formally, under the notion that the mixed use development bylaw intended for there to be mixed a mix of uses in the mixed use overlay district 
without necessarily requiring that the each component, each building itself have a mix of uses. We were met with favorable response on that for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that this would be a very needed project in the town of Littleton and uh, one that attracts walking and living in the downtown area and satisfies a huge need right now, a huge demand and a huge need right now. We presented to the board the possibility of putting a single commercial uh, uh, unit in there in order to satisfy the mixed use uh, bylaw and we think it's relatively um, patronizing and benign because a single commercial unit isn't going to give you the mix of uses that you're looking for. I think the mixed use bylaw was intended to bring some vibrant combination into the whole district and not just building by building. Um, we also are prepared to, they, the applicant is prepared to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals on a variance for it if necessary, but reading the bylaw in total, I think that this board has the ability to conclude, as I said, that this satisfies a mix of uses in the mixed use district by bringing some walking apartments to the downtown area in close proximity to the businesses and allowing people like my neighbor and one of the members of my board who has to be driven everywhere for two out of one road. He's very excited about the possibility of being able to move into a project like this and walk to his uh, convenience store and <clears throat> other places downtown. So I think we satisfy a need. You also are aware that the developer voluntarily offered to commit a certain number of units to affordability, um, and that's without any subsidy or without any um, requirement to have to do so, and that was one of the quid pro quos for asking that rather than give you a mix of uses, we give you some affordable units, and I think there's an overriding need to do that in this town as well. Thank you. Very well said. Very well put. I, so, no, let's so, hope. I'm going to let. Oh, okay. I'm so, if, I'm, line, if so. I can finish my, with my comments, I I tend to agree with the council, uh, Sherry, on um, on the the fact that the when this uh, zone was created, or and uh, and voted on by the the town, uh, the in overriding intent of of creating this was to bring pedestrian traffic into an area that didn't have it. And by bringing, by doing that, by adding uh, residential a residential component, um, and it was it was it was a lot of discussion on that residential component on how much uh, each residence would spend within that district to help keep that district alive, and I think that that's the overriding uh, fundamental of this zone change, and I I would agree with with Sherry. That, um, that the intent of this was to bring people into the town and not um, have a commercial component building by building. Okay. Okay. Jerry? So the, my question is to um, Mr. Heap, Chris. In your email back to Marin under... Item number three, you've got a definition of mixed use. It basically says a combination of residential and commercial uses arranged vertically in multiple stories of buildings or horizontally adjacent to one another in one or more building within a lot. Does this language pertain to buildings? Does, it, does this language pertain to a building contained on one site, or does it contain to pertain to buildings on different lots within the district? I believe that someone comes to you for a mixed-use special permit to for authorization to construct a mixed-use development. And a mixed-use development on, a, on one lot would have both of the necessary components for mixed use. That's my, that's how I read the definition in the zone bylaw. So the bylaw, the way it's written, doesn't pertain to the separate lots within the district. It just pertains to the building that's being proposed. And horizontal and vertical applies to 
the horizontal and vertical of the, the proposed building? To the lot as a whole. To a to an individual lot. To a lot. Not not so not the district as a whole. Yeah, I would say that I don't read the bylaws saying one developer comes in on one lot and does commercial, another developer comes in on a separate lot and does residential. If you're developing a lot under mixed use, you provide um, both of those things. Now there can be a lot of residential, a little commercial. There can be 50-50. There can be you know, or, or the other way around. Right. It's got to happen. I think on a given lot being permitted as a mixed use project, you need to present both of those components. So my question and back to you. Sherry would be why why do you think then that the bylaw was written the I other think way? The special permit granting authority has the ability to waive the requirement that it be mixed on one lot. And I think there are compelling reasons to do so. I also think the bylaw is subject to uh, failure because it truly is impractical in a, in a community like this to have ground floor retail and upstairs residential. We've tried it, my building was that way. You just you cannot run a business office with the stomping of little feet up above. You can't run um, a nail salon downstairs with people residing above. It just is impractical in a community of this size and this flavor. It's very different than downtown Boston. So, um, I mean, given, given the points, um, Addressing the board now. I mean, given the points that are being raised, I mean, I understand the, the intent or what the interpretation is by the applicant of the intent of the bylaw. Um, also, going to Mr. Crowley's comments about what he agrees to is what the intent of the bylaw is. Doesn't look like our bylaw is written that way. Oh, I. Regardless I, of what the, the intent is, our bylaw is not written that way. So. It's not written which way? It's not written so that you would have a mixed use throughout the district. In other words, right. yes, I, under, I, I and, I, and this is, I'm just going to paraphrase now, or I'm going to just give you off my off top of my head what I think this means. Developer one comes in in lot A and says, I'm going to put in apartments. His neighbor next door says, OK, well, he's got apartments, so what does that mean for me? Do I have to do commercial? And does the planning board now have to go out and poll the entire district and say, well, what's our ratio of residential to commercial? Yeah, how, so from a practical standpoint, how, would, how are we supposed to apply that? If he builds 14, what do we have to do to the next guy? If, if I can, if I I mean, can I'm answer. I'm, just, I'm not talking about, what I'm talking about is how would we contemplate that? So if we were to say, if we were to say yes, we agree with you, and we're going to give you, grant you this special permit, to allow you to do a non-mixed use in a mixed use area with that intent. Don't we then have to go back and look at our bylaw and say, we got to change this bylaw now because for the next applicant that comes in, now we have this whole We've created we've mess. Yeah, but but, but our bylaw has a provision for that. And it, it starts out with these words, the Littleton Village Overlay District West, uh, the Beaverbrook, uh, this is the Beaverbrook uh, section is to promote a variety of balance of commercial uses and retail uses coordinated through a, a, a master plan process. See, um, the concept that we were trying to achieve here was um, was balance and the injection of, of a residential component in that area. Again, so I'll go back. To, so wait, I'm not done yet. So let's just go back to this. I understand what the intent is. Yeah versus what is statutorily written in the bylaw, well, and they this, don't appear to agree. This is statutorily written into the bylaw. Well, what is? No. Can that's I, not, can that's, I speak to, it's not a standard. Just, excuse me, can I speak to that? Um, Mr. Crowley, I think you want to be in the mixed use uh, provisions of 173, 165, but there is similar language in B that says the special permit granting authority May grant a special permit for mixed-use development only upon finding that such use is in harmony with the general purpose and intent. General purpose of intent it doesn't say specifics in every regard, and the proposal uh, meets pro specific provisions set forth under the bylaw. 
In granting the special permit, the SPGA may also specify conditions, safeguards, and limitations concerning the use of the property associated therewith. So I propose to you that you have the ability to say the condition, safeguard, and limitation is we will grant the special permit without the commercial component as long as the number of affordable units remain affordable, rental units, for a 20 or 25 year period. Because there's your safeguard limitation and condition that would change, that would distinguish this project from every other one and not set a precedent. Or if it sets a precedent, it sets a precedent to do more residential development in the mixed use overlay district only upon granting some more affordable units that we can count in the inventory. I, I think I understand what you're saying. So, Chris, you want to respond to that? Um, I just want to preface my next comments by saying I, I don't have anything. I, I don't. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm commenting on the bylaw itself and, and not right. this project, right. which I have absolutely nothing against right. or for one way or the other. But in addition to the definition of mixed use, um, there is also among the special permit criteria a requirement that the ground floors of buildings fronting streets or public access ways shall be reserved for commercial uses except as specified below. And there's a couple of instances where it can be used for residential, one of which is there's residential behind commercial ground floor space. Um, another is um, it's set back in some way. And another is that the planning board determines that street front residential uses will not have an adverse impact on the continuity of commercial street front uses. So, I mean, the bylaw in terms of both, if you step away from the definition itself and the criteria that you need to apply, there is, there is I think, as the bylaw was written, uh, there is clearly a priority given to commercial use on the ground floor and fronting on the street. So the term, so you're right. So you're saying you use the word priority. It's not a priority for a requirement. There are you can you can you can find in some circumstances that commercial. So this is not talking about whether commercial use can go away entirely. This is just talking about whether the commercial use needs needs to be on the street on, on the front of the street. Well, on the street, uh, it needs to be there one way or the other, um, right. based on the definition. But as you get into the finer design of the point of the project, um, there is a preference to have the commercial space be on the street. Park. So, my feeling on this is, I think if I comment on your project, it's a good project. I don't have a problem with the project. I don't have a problem with 14 rental units in downtown. I don't. What I don't want to do is be involved in making a decision that somehow sets us up for the next development that comes in and puts us in a bad spot. I don't want to, I don't want to weaken our bylaw. If the bylaw is weak, and if beyond this particular discussion we decide that we need to amend that bylaw to be able to accommodate this, then we should take a look at that. But I don't believe that I would personal support making the decision that could harm the bylaw for the future, which is re really part of what our job is, is to protect the integrity of our bylaws. I would submit to you that the bylaw was enacted in May of 2010, and no project has come forward with the mixed-use residential commercial downtown. And I would submit to you that in and of itself is a darn good reason for saying this one has merit, and we can give the safeguards of the affordable unit uh, condition and waive the commercial component on this project only because the developer has come forward with a project that will test the waters and see if this works, then it says our bylaw isn't working. With, with all due respect, 448 Wayside, uh, right around the Wayside Kitchen or King Street actually did meet the requirements and we did do that recently. And with the primary aspect was commercial front, Secondary and back was residential, and met it exactly. We have done it, and we have had projects that have gone through this. Those properties were always commercial down and residential up. But that's what this is, too. This is commercial down and residential up as well. So you're basically going from a commercial entity now to all residential. Conversion. It's a mixed use as it is now. That's the problem I have with it. It's already a mixed use, and you're going from a mixed use to a single use, which kicks in the residential aspect of the bylaw. But guys, um, we we have the ability to 
to see beyond that through the the through the overwhelming well, through the well, overwhelming I guide. I don't think we do guidelines. But anyway. Wait, wait, wait. No, I, I want to go. I want to go down the rest well, of the yeah, board. Of I mean, I, let's sure, just ex ahead. let's explore that comment. So, I mean, did you hear Richie's comment? I mean, do you agree with that comment? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking to, to Chris. 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 We have the overwhelming ability and and duty to uh, look at this from a, a higher perspective too. Well, but as it pertains to the current bylaw we have right now, does that do we have the ability to overlook the wording in our bylaw and how it's, we don't, correct? Reasonable people might disagree about the, the definition in the bylaw. So we can argue about, can I be, we might argue about what the definition says, but you have to apply the definition that, that exists. So if there's a definition, if we accept that the definition requires both residential and commercial, that's not something we can waive. Um, if you get down into the, into the special permit criteria, there are decisions you can make. You can say, we're going to let the commercial space be moved off the ground floor. We can send it back from the street. Um, those are sort of special permit kinds of decisions that the board, that are within the board's discretion. But if there's a kind of use that is defined and you can grant a special permit for it, you can't grant a, grant a special permit for something else. Um, that, other broad, the hmm? that broad. That broad. But you also, as Richie, um, uh, Richie um, Jerry had mentioned, you were talking vertical and horizontal. It's in the definition. It's in the definition. Right, but they're offering none, so they're... Right, well... No, but that's my, right. that's my point. Right, we're I mean, weighing into the concept of what we're really doing. We're deciding whether or not we, be, we agree with the concept and whether or not there has to be a commercial component in order for it to be a mixed use. That's a yes or a no answer is all it really is. And I believe the answer is he needs both. So, no, I want to keep going. Yeah, no, I know. But. Okay. I want to say something. So, go ahead. To, to the developer, though, I mean, are, are you married to this idea that you cannot have? Well, we put a lot of time in. We put a lot of time in. No, I, I know. I, I, in, in money. In money. To I totally appreciate I completely you appreciate know, we, it. We did come to informal meetings and we did talk to people and, you know, the very first meeting was, I, out of this board was, I think we should waive the aspect of commercial in this. This doesn't meet, it doesn't need to have the commercial aspect to this. And that's project. why we, and then we talked about it going all the way back to residential if we yep. did that. And we, had, we got town council to weigh in and town council has weighed in and said we can't do that. So I, I agree. No, and no, I think I, when you yeah. say we, I just got a question. Who, who approached town council to, to discern whether or not this was an entity that was available to Ma this? Uh, Sherry asked us to weigh in on the waivers that she was requesting. So I had Marin send all the waivers to town council to, to weigh in on all the waivers that were being requested. And that's how, that's how the letter came back for this. We had a determination early on that if it was all residential that there was a good, that we should consider it, the zoning to change back to all residential. When was that? That was the very, that we, we discussed that on the very first meeting. That if there was no commercial component, then we all suggested, remember, we'll put a laundromat in it. We'll put a rental office in it to kind of placate that and move forward from that. Because I think we all agree. We don't have a problem with the idea. I think we have a problem with who comes next if we approve this for you. That's the problem I have with it. Because, and the reason, one last thing, is the reason that it's in the, in the overlay district for the common was because we didn't want to put it in the point overlay district so that a developer or somebody could come in and say, I'm going to put an apartment complex, which is not allowed in Littleton. We'll put a little bit of commercial on the first floor and the rest four stories up is going to be apartments. We didn't want that. We wanted to revitalize the common. We wanted a mixed juice in the common, and that's why we put it in the common district. So there was a, cons uh, there was a thought process when we did this five years ago that that's how we wanted to go with it. The question the board has now, or the issue the board has now is we all like the idea. We all feel bad that we've gone this far and now we have we have this in front of us and where do we go from here? We would like to see a commercial component added to it that is viable, that's going to be there for duration of the housing going in and not tie it to the fact that it's going to be affordable. It's still all housing. It's all one thing. Can I, can I ask you that? 
hear from the rest of the board and then we'll respond. That's what I'm trying to. I didn't want to weigh in on yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to go this way. Go ahead, Don. Sure. <clears throat> As you know, I have issues with this because I think it's problematic. I think it's opposite of the intent and the letter of this bylaw. And you can look at point by point and go through this. I agree completely with what Chris Heap has written. What really puzzles me is given that it's going to be a knockdown, or originally it's just all 100% commercial, you've included some residential property nearby, a new construction of a completely different use and given your knowledge and experience of ZBA, being the chair of ZBA, why didn't you advise your client to go to the ZBA? That's what this is for, is conversion from one use to another no, use. That's no. Don, that's not appropriate No, you say that. Excuse it's me. not. No, because we... The, Listen, I, I, I let you talk. I, Listen, right, this is democracy. This right, allows residential. And we're off. So this, this, the intent is mixed use, and it's quite clear as to what the dwelling should be like. I mean, you have a hodgepodge of commercial and residential, you might as well throw zoning out the window. This is an overlay to allow mixed use, and this is the definition that everyone uses in other towns. I've never seen this hodgepodge saying, oh, okay, I can do spot uh, residential here, spot commercial here. Mixed use is meant to be mixed use. It says dwelling units shall be allowed on ground floors of buildings as follows. And this is the case of Wayside Kitchen, how it qualified. The building set behind another building that has commercial uses on the ground floor. Or the residential portion of the ground floor of a building is behind street front retail office restaurant uses within the same building. So, or the plan board determines that street front residential uses will not have an adverse impact, impact on the continuity of the commercial street front uses and where street front residential uses will not be adversely affected by proximity to street and adjacent commercial uses so here we have goldsmith street this is the only commercial project on goldsmith street and doing complete knockdown and converting to residential there's no way that can fit in it also undercuts the master plan economic development plans to get rid of uh, commercial uh, development here you're bring I mean it's helpful having a mix and you do see mixes you you don't like it in your building but you see this in West Concord you see this in air you see it in Concord Village you see a lot of different places where there's commercial residential on the ground floor or in front I mean there's commercial on the ground floor or in front and residential above it does work and the whole idea is in a commercial area to bring in some vibrancy some residential folks bringing in residential folks is an addition it's a secondary not the primary purpose this is allow some residential uses in a commercial district i mean if this goes ahead people will just knock down anything that they're not doing economically and slap up large residential apartment buildings that is not good for the town there's already a uh, a subsidy uh, of uh, residential areas because of the cost of services to residential areas. Economic areas, commercial, bring in extra money to the town. And that's the whole idea of mixed use to make it more vibrant. I look at what other towns do, such as I looked at a case in Newton where they have a proposal out for someone to do mixed use, and that would be commercial on the ground floor, residential above. It also was for affordable areas. It insisted they all be with the rental and be a quarter of them being uh, affordable so they could call all of them as such. And no subsidy. Here, we're, I mean, it, this just doesn't make sense for the town. I mean, affordable housing can be given as uh, in this uh, equation, but you can't ignore the fact you're supposed to have a commercial component and having a laundry or a telephone for leasing it's just an apartment large apartment complex there's nothing commercial about that okay peter huh it's your turn now <laughs> well at the beginning i was a little uh just uh we pushed them down all the ways to this point here after listening to mr heap i tend to agree in some respects and I actually agree a little bit with Dawn. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> 
I, I need to suck that up for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, and and uh, actually, I agree with a lot of a little bit of all of it. But I think what I don't want to be is I don't think the town needs to be pigeonholed into one property, all residential, because the next one, you know, you can't pick. You can't tell him you you have to do residential. You have to do commercial. I think I think it does need to be some form of a mixed use. It's just that simple. So based on forty seconds. Forty yeah. mark that forty seconds. Yeah, that was good. Um, yep. That was really good. You get a prize. Right. How do you like that? Based I guess. On the Stars? Go ahead. Based yeah. on the board's reaction and Mr. Gates' earlier comments, um, the applicant would propose that the unit closest to Goldsmith Street, which is the one facing the street, have a ground floor commercial, be a ground floor commercial. And that we ask the board to consider allowing the rest of the dwelling units to the rest of the building to be dwelling units. What's the percentage of that? How many? One fourteenth. One fourteenth. Uh, it's up. He's hitting the. She's hitting the commercial now. Yeah, yeah, Richie, come on. Look, <laughs> you just got through talking about. I'm going to read something. This is the very. This is the very beginning of our zoning. Purpose for the benefit of the town of Littleton, Massachusetts, to keep our town a good place which to live and work, preserve its historical character and agricultural land for the purposes stated. Um, this is, uh, our zoning is about us. It's about creating a better place for us and, and our neighbors to live. And when we're talking about taking a commercial element and creating a residential, that's a good thing in a residential area. But this isn't the residential area. The whole street is residential. This is commercial. The and whole have, in the area is is right. all residential. You you have a brand new proposal. Um, mm -hmm. We're in 15, 20 minutes into what's supposed to be another public hearing. Right. Um, usually you ha ask for new requests to come in a month ahead of time, if not yeah. two weeks. Um, in the it's good to have this discussion, but do you want to continue? Continue do you want I think, to? I think we need to continue later in the evening. I, the applicant has been back here four times, has spent money on engineers and attorneys four times, yeah. has responded to every single request you had four times. Not ever did you say that the commercial component would have to be greater than a unit. And I don't think it's fair to the applicant to force them to come back yet another time. I don't think it's fair to the town to this. I mean, this is quite well, I'm, clear. I'm not certain the applicant will go forward with more than one unit commercial. Economically, it doesn't make any sense. Well, then it's a bad project. Well, you can you can think what you want. I don't think we can answer that tonight. I don't think we. I think we need to take a look at it. We need to see an actual proposal. I think Marvin's right. We're trying to cookie cutter this, rush it through, and I think we really mm -hmm. do need to to come back again. If you're asking us for a vote, you're going to take a chance with what you've heard tonight. If you want to come back and maybe rethink how you're ultimately going to do it and maybe think about a little more um, than one unit. I don't think, no. an interest, That's an interesting concept. The but lousy I'm part of it is, is that a lot of things downtown really don't survive. You know, there's, there's the, the sports shop that with, with Littleton has some great sports athletes and, and it didn't survive. You know, what can survive downtown? We get, that's that's a, that's the, the, I counted seven but empty regardless. stores. But this is office space right now, and we're at a, we're it's real. It's at 20% least right now, the, the space that we have right now. Which the residential signs. component we uh, rented at right now? It's full. A hundred. Yeah. So if it's an economic hardship, there's a mechanism for this, which is the conversion going through the ZBA. There's another path. You chose a bad path for this. This, this well, is no, 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 Don. This I don't is know if that's right. I don't think. I don't think this is a bylaw. This is a zoning issue. I don't think this is a really. But it doesn't meet the bylaw. Don, Don, we're the authority that has the jurisdiction. It's, uh, it's about a use variance, right? It's a use variance, and we don't. Want <coughs> all right, move on. Either make well, a decision, all right, I to think vote, or to just ask them if they would like to continue. I think you need to think about continuing or asking if, us to vote. If you if you did, there's an election between now and then. But that's. <laughs> then we have to start all over again. What do you mean start all over? Honest with you, if something happens, what's going to do? Why? Because do one or, or more of members of the board change? Or do you want us to take a vote on it? I mean, it's probably worthwhile thinking about it and thinking: Can you do something Why better? We start before before, like, before we close this, can I just ask Chris a question? Sure. How much of the horizon? 
How much of the horizontal would he have to meet? He the whole. When you say the horizontal, are you talking about the whole bottom floor or what? The definition does no. not say. It doesn't say. But I would have you turn to the special permit criteria that you need to make findings on under 173, 166, A, B, C, and D. We, we also have 62. We also have the purpose, which could be interpreted, as you said, differently by different people. I have one. No, it's the other book. The purpose actually No, we have in the packet, too. But you've also got some criteria that you can look at before you make, needs to make findings uh, about mm -hmm. on page 62. So, the answer, so the answer to your question is, is there's no, uh, got it. Ground floor should be reserved for commercial. I'm not saying necessarily all, but most. Um, and there's some, you know, you, need, you guys need to make judgments uh, on the stock that's listed on page 62 as to whether it's met or not. It says ground floor should be reserved for commercial except as specified below. <coughs> the building is set behind another building that has commercial uses on the ground floor, or the residential portion of the ground floor of a building is set behind street front retail office restaurant uses Which within the same there. building. If you unit puts one. the front building, you know the first Gold unit Street. facing Goldsmith is your commercial unit, and all the residential will be set behind it. So it satisfies the second paragraph under dwelling units. The residential portion of the ground floor of the building is set behind street front retail office restaurant. That's it. A, we can't do it because we need to see a plan. So you have to come back anyway. We can't vote on that. We need to actually see a plan. Um, we need to think about it. We need an actual submittal for it, just telling us now. You actually have to go. You need another meeting. You can either decide you're going to go that Steady route. Want to continue. I think you need to continue and you, and you need to think continue. about what, unfortunately. All right, so we'll continue it till the 14th. That the next meeting is May 14th. Um, would you like to do this at <clears throat> if we shoot for 7:45? Is there? Is that, um, are you available to start at seven on May 14th? No. No. Okay. So we do this at 7:45. That will work. Is yeah. there, before we close this it, for tonight, is there anybody in the audience that wants to comment on this? Yeah, good, good well, idea. We're into somebody else's time. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, Jerry. Oh, we're into another applicant's time, dude. I'm so sorry. All right. Anyway, 745 on the 14th. Thank you. I'm asking the public if they want to comment. We're going to continue here. We have people here tonight that might not be there next week. Okay, we have a, an 8 o'clock no public You're hearing zoning yes. amended bylaw. We're unfortunately a little bit late. <coughs> so. Oh. <coughs> Everybody has. Anyway, zoning amended bylaw. We have. Uh, Thank you. Okay, town a little. Um, this is. Public hearings, only amendment by law. The Town of uh, Littleton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, April 9, 2015 at 8 p.m. in room 103 of the Shattuck Street Town Hall, 37 Shattuck Street, Littleton, Mass. to consider zoning by law amendment according to Master and Law Chapter 40A, Section 5. The proposed amendment is to revise Section 17310B of the zoning by law, which regulates the changes to nonconforming no. uses and structures the, pers the, the proposed amendment would clarify which changes to non-conforming structures may be authorized by special permit and which, instead of require a variance, consent with most uh, Massachusetts juris jurisprudence addressing this subject. The full text of the proposed bylaw is on file at the clerk town clerk and planning board offices and can be viewed during their office hours or online at www.littletonma.org. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed zoning amendments 
Should appear at the time and place designated. Sorry. Written comments also accepted prior to the public hearing. Richard Crowley, Clerk. Okay, this is um, was brought forward really by the ZBA to um, deal with non-conforming issues. Um, there's a little bit of a difference between what Chris is proposing and what you're proposing. Can kind of figure out where we're where we're at with that. I. So, I don't know who you want to hear from first. It, 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 it's, it's the ZBA's, it is essentially the ZBA's um, proposal. I have done um, my best to write up what the ZBA was proposing, and uh, there, I think there is some slight differences in, like, in, in, in um, the language between the two of our, our, our versions. Um, the, the motivation for the change is a relatively recent case that came out <coughs> last year, I believe. Um, for a while in the case law, prior to this case, it looked as though if you had a non-conforming structure, um, you could use the special permit process in the, that's in the bylaw and in the statute for expanding non-conformities to do two things. One, to authorize the expansion of non-conformity. So let's imagine you were in a setback and you wanted to build closer to your lot line. You're expanding an existing nonconformity. You, you can grant a special permit authorizing that, that, that change on a finding that the expansion is not more detrimental to the neighborhood. For a while in the case law, it also looked as though you could use that special permit process to authorize a new nonconformity. So let's say you were building closer to, you were already within the setback and you're building closer to the lot line, but you're also building <coughs> your porch out toward the side lot line which violates the side setback for the very first time. It looked in the case law like you could use this special permit process for both of those things. Uh, the recent case made clear that you can't use it for both of those things. You can only use the special permit process to authorize the expansion <coughs> of an existing nonconformity. And if you are creating a new nonconformity, you must also go get a variance in the Board of Appeals. Um, so this uh, bylaw change I think motivated out of a desire to make that clear in the, in, in, in the bylaw. So as the proposal reads now, it would say if you want to expand the existing nonconformity, you use the special permit process. If you are creating a new one, you will get a variance. Um, and because the bylaw as it's currently drafted lumps together both nonconforming structures and nonconforming uses, to make this clear, we had to do some breaking out of those two things. Um, so, so now we have a section that deals with expansions of existing non-conforming structures, creation of new non-conformities with respect to structures, and a third section that deals with non-conforming uses, um, just because the new case did not affect uses at all, it only dealt with structures. So we don't need to, there's no, there's no change with respect to non-conforming uses as a result of that case. Mm -hmm. um, so. okay. Maybe they can talk about what they agree on. Not quite. Right. <laughs> okay. We're not quite there because the one thing that our board had in front of us to vote on was the draft warrant article, which includes at the end of the nonconforming use section the sentence that reads Once changed to a nonconforming use, no structure or land shall be permitted to revert. Excuse me, once changed to a conforming Conform use. No structure or land shall be permitted to revert to a non-conforming use. And is that, is that still in your draft? That's that is still that, that that is still in, in my draft. Yeah. Right. This is this is our our board right. voted to remove that sentence, and I'll explain to you why. It was the suggestion of first of all, it was a suggestion of one of the members of our board that. We just broke out the non-conforming structures and the non-conforming uses, and this sentence puts back in the lumping together of <coughs> uses and structures in a paragraph that's only pertaining to uses. So if that sentence were to be in at all, it should be its own paragraph or its own sentence as a number perhaps four. However, <coughs> Sorry. however the already existing number four um, 
or the, the already existing bylaws says in number three, which is now going to be renumbered, a non-conforming use which has been abandoned, discontinued for a period of two years, or changed to a conforming use, shall not be reestablished, and any future use of the premises shall conform with this chapter. So the member of the board who raised this as a grammatically incorrect location for this sentence also said, do we really want it at all? Do we really need it at all? Because this existing number three, which is staying, says, if a use is abandoned for two years or changed to a conforming use, it goes away. So isn't this sentence redundant? Now, I think Mr. Heap agreed with us that that's sort of structurally an acceptable proposition, except that he didn't feel that it was an innocuous bylaw change with the omission of that sentence. He felt that omission of that sentence made this a substantive bylaw change, and that's what we needed to have before you, I hope, and perhaps at town meeting. <coughs> yes. So the the reason it, it, I, I originally left it in yeah, as I was breaking out in various sections is just because it, ex it that sentence exists in the current version of the bylaw. Um, so if left in, if we leave it intact, we can say um, we're making th this change is, is reacting to a case that deals with non-conforming structures. Period. That's all we're doing. If we delete this sentence, it becomes slightly more complicated because we're making a change with respect to how we deal with non-conforming uses. I'm not saying that change is good or bad, but it, but it is a change above and beyond the first change that we talked about. Um, so that, that's right. making, you're, you're either making one change or you're making two. And this, the, what that change would be is, is if the sentence says that once you take out a non-conforming use, you change it to a conforming use, instantaneously that you, the non-conforming use is over. You can't, you can't go back to it. Um, there's another section in the bylaw that says if you abandon it for two years, it goes away after two years. You can't come back. Um, so if you take this sentence out, I think there may be a case at some point where a non-conforming use is changed to a conforming use. It goes away immediately, can't be resurrected. Um, it, based on the sentence. If the sentence comes out, uh, someone would have two years in which to think about it and potentially bring back the non-conforming use that used to be in place. So why do you want to take it out? The board voted to take it out. The board said, we prefer to have the two-year uh, two period. That it's like a grace period. It's like a grace period. It's, it's like a grace period. And furthermore, if you look at the original draft, Byler has drafted, B1 lumped together change extension or alterations of structures and uses. And so this sentence properly appeared at the end of that B1 because it was trying to lump together uses and structures as well. And now we have this new bylaw that separates the non-conforming structure, with no new non with no new bearing, with no new uh, non-conformities, non we have the non-conforming structure. With new non-conformities, we have the non-conforming uses. We have three separate paragraphs, so the sentence doesn't belong in the just the just use one. paragraph. It belongs in all of them if it goes in at all. And when our board discussed it and put it up for a vote, the membership unanimously agreed that we didn't want the sentence in at all. So if we take it out, what that mean? What do we have to put that? What do you want us to do? What's the risk? Wait, did, could I ask a question? Um, uh, Bill, what is your uh, read on this? You're on the ZBA. I'm on the ZBA, yes, right here. Um, I was part of the discussion, as Sherry just said. It, it came up and was pointed out by one of the members um, questioning that we already have the statement in here, number three, in the current bylaw, is that not a little redundant? And the feeling of the entire board, unanimous, was yes, it appears to be redundant. Um, I agree totally with what Cherry just said. And we're taking on the current bylaw, section B1, that one paragraph, we're splitting it to two different 
things, and then adding the third one for non-conforming use. That one statement that's currently in the under B1 now is going to the third one. It, it, again, it seems to be redundant. Um, the whole purpose of the proposed change to the bylaw to separate, to have a special permit in it for one situation and variance for another, is to clarify some of the recent court decisions and the for the enforcement of the bylaw and for the applicants coming in for building permits for the interpretation for the general public and by the building commissioner's only enforcement officer. To clarify it, make it a lot simpler instead of being vague. So it's easier to understand, much easier to work with, and much easier to enforce. Again, if you throw a statement in a couple of different places, that kind of become redundant and could cause to the general public confusion. We thought it'd be no going with the spirit of what is already being proposed, try to clarify it, make it easier to work with, and create less arguments as to what it says. No, this seemed to be a good. I good think you need to take it up because you're going to have a problem at town meeting. I don't know what that means. With everybody else arguing if it's in there. What, it'd be what does it mean? Clean take it out or leave it? What, why do we care? Uh, that's, uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Here's a question for you, uh, for, for both council. Um, we, we had a recent um, but he had applicant. He a good question that yeah, I, isn't being answered. I can, I can answer that question. Yeah. I, don't have, I don't want to be construed as debating this pro and sure. con yeah, with the ZBA. I, I, I just want to make sure you guys understand what the change would do, and that if it's if this additional change stays in, that somebody you know, and it sounds like the ZBA is prepared to do it, that somebody be prepared to explain to town meeting what the change is being proposed is, um, because it goes with this deletion, it goes a little bit above and beyond. We're reacting to a case that just came out, um, so as long as that explanation is provided and. and everybody's for it, that's fine. The only substantive change I think that this would cause is that if somebody had, let's say somebody had a home occupation in a house. It's a bad example, but we'll use it anyway. Because home occupations, you know, are allowed. Anyway, somebody's got a dentist office in a residential structure. Um, but the bylaw says you can't have a dentist office there. They do anyway. It's been there for 20 years. They, um, they pack up the dentist office and shut it down, convert it to a purely residential structure. And the minute they do that, that use goes away and cannot come back. As the bylaw is currently drafted, if we delete that sentence, that property owner would have, once they pack up and close the office, would have two years to think about whether or not they want to um, bring it back. But that makes sense. And what, so like, I will I will defer to yeah. to the board as to whether that that's as a matter of policy that, that's yeah. the point that's, right that's that's, that's a substantive change if you want to make that change you accept the ZBA yeah. heaven if you only want to have a bylaw amendment that conforms with the recently uh, issued court ruling then you don't change it but it's an opportunity to do whatever you want. It, if you want to <coughs> give it two, you know, two years of life to, to, uh, to, to a use uh, so, that it doesn't have now, so go for the change. Somebody challenged this two-year grace period. So what, how's that? Because you're saying conforms to recent court case. Having the language in or out? The court case had absolutely nothing to do with this two-year grace period. All the court case had to do with is whether if you are if you have a non-conforming structure. So forget you forget no, no, no. You got a structure that is non-conforming. <coughs> you want to both aggravate the existing non-conformity and create a new one. So right. you're putting Absolutely. a new story on top of your house, even though the only non-conforming is you're in the setback. Um, you need you now. We now know. That you need a variance for the new, Got newly that. created nonconformity. Period. That's all the case did. We're talking about the use part that's not covered by the decision. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Which is the two year grace period. Yes. It's nice. So, so the no material impact to the bylaw either way. One is instant and one is two years. Correct. 
Yeah. Yeah. All we should really care about is whether we have a right. Have a right to go back. For use. Right. For, for use only. only. For use only. Not for structure. <coughs> but this where it says it. where you want to take out revert to a no, uh, no structure land shall be permitted to revert to a non-confirming. Is that taking it right out General of it? sentence beginning with once changed. This, you want to strike? Strike. Only, only, sentence. only, only the, the Board of Appeals wants to strike it. Chris does not. I have no opinion no, he doesn't care. the other no. so long as everybody Chris, understands Chris's what they're task doing. Was, uh, Chris's task, he was approaching it mm -hmm. to simply look at uh, translating that court decision into our existing bylaw with no substantive changes. Mm -hmm. That's it. it. If there's a substantive change to be made, like granting a two-year extension that doesn't exist now, mm -hmm. then you can do that under the article. But you, but it wasn't. But you can't say that it's because the court is telling you to. Uh, you, you're doing it because you want. To. Bill, you have a, a question. Yeah. It, it, not really a question, but a couple of comments. First of all, in our current, we have the abandonment article. That's basically because, based on Chapter 48, the State Zoning Act has it in there. I mean, that's a state act of the abandonment and for two years. Going along with that, based <coughs> on more than 20 years' experience of the zoning enforcement end of it, it's difficult to know when somebody abandons a use. Okay, and you know, how do they do it? I mean, there were court cases on this well that proving, well, just because he's not operating out of it doesn't mean he abandoned it in whatever else. So, you know, two years is a very minimum time. Sometimes it takes more than that to know that somebody has shut down business or not performed business in there again. Mm -hmm. So, again, by putting it in here, it's kind of like two different wordings of the same thing to cause confusion. The whole purpose of this is to eliminate confusion, make it easier for the general public to understand and easier for the enforcement. So it raises the question, is it going to be a perpetual two years because you can't tell when the clock starts? In, 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 there's also some legal cases and different interpretations of what abandonment means. Mm -hmm. so, so two years longer than abandonment going to be left out. Now, 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 now I'm confused. So we take the sentence out. We go to the two-year grace period for use, but you're telling me you don't know how to measure the two-year grace period. That's a separate article altogether. It's a separate article that's, altogether. And, and that's um, zoning enforcement officer's right. process that he has to go through if right. he has, has to address this. But so maybe trying to enforce is helpful. We're saying we still have this, this statement of, in the bylaw, because mm -hmm. instead of number three, it's going to be renumbered to number four. Yeah. It's still there. It's not like two statements back to back under different numbers that are kind of saying the same thing but maybe saying something different. All right, so I'm just going to get back to this. We take the sentence out, it goes to a two year grace period, which you don't have any way to measure, and that's the system you guys want to go with. It, it's debatable. I'm not saying you, you don't have, have a way. You have a way yes. to measure. There was ways of measuring it. It's, so, a, it's the same as if you have a structure down at the lake that was an old cottage and somebody hasn't lived there in a long time in a long, 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 long time. Mm -hmm. You have a way of measuring, has it been abandoned for two years? The building inspector does it all the time. Mm -hmm. You have a dental office in a building that stops being used as a dental office. There's ways to measure that when that two years starts. Okay. But, but the but, issue is, but I think it's the interpretation is what I, I have a, a problem with this. What you, this board that you have on the Board of Appeals now interpret something, 10 years from now, the new board may interpret it an entire different way. Like and that's unfortunate in the fact that, you know, that is it going to fit now or is it going to fit later? It should so fit there for all the time. Precisely why we want the sentence out, and that is this reason. Suppose that the dental office stops being a dental office but markets its property as a residence with a dental office in it. Mm -hmm. And if it's instantaneous that it stops being a dental office, they have to jump through hoops or they can't get it back at all. And that's a really good example. They should have a two-year grace period. You know, it's, oh, okay. it's the that's ZBA's right. bylaw. They're, they're basically here because the statu statutory requirement is that they come mm -hmm. before us. If they want it out, I think we should respect their decision and take it out because it's their bylaw. I just want to understand what was going well, on. Well, I, I agree with it because it makes way? sense. Yeah. I mean, at one point someone talked about what was enforceable. Yeah, it's enforceable either way, I think. Uh, okay, I mean, so yeah. I mean, it's practical either way. I mean, it's your, it, it was just a call that we made, a determination yeah. we made that a, 
three-year grace period makes sense in in view of the cases that we had. If someone has absolutely no ability to bring it back, mm -hmm. that seems to defeat the whole purpose of a zoning board of appeals, yeah. which is I there to hear cases of hardship and necessity. Sherry's right, like like Sherry's um, Sherry's if I could Sherry's uh, explanation about selling a property that's got a, a commercial use in it. Is, was perfect because you're, you're absolutely right. In order to sell a property, you have to stop operating a business. And the, the moment, the instant, the second that you stop operating that business is when you lose the. And then this, this, can we this way you can. This two year grace period allows us to move forward. I think we're all right there. Yeah, we're all over. <laughs> can we vote? I'll entertain a motion to oh. take the. Hold on. So that was. The only substantive change. The ZBA also proposed uh, a word uh, adjustment to my original draft that I think is entirely innocuous. Um, it goes from reconstruction extension or structural change of a pre existing non conforming structure to reconstruction extension, alteration, or change of a pre existing non conforming structure. Uh, that's their preferred language. It actually does hew a little bit more closely to the statute. I have no problem with it, and I think it's fine. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. In both paragraphs one and two of yep. my draft I'll warrant. I'll so we're voting on move. We recommend approval. So moved. Second. Second. Yeah, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you for the discussion. Now, yeah, if you just dealt with modifications. The planning board needs to Go say to whether you're going to support it. Support okay. or not support the article. I'll entertain the motion to send the town meeting that the planning board supports this article. So moved. As amended. As amended. Right. So moved. So we can report the be reported to coming second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we change a mind on floor? No. Sure. No. Do whatever you want as a re as an individual. <laughs> yes, Mr. <coughs> I just had a question on section three. It looks like in some ways it opens the floodgates. It says if I've got a non conformity and I get the uh, ZBA to agree, I can expand it. Essentially, without limit. No, not necessarily. No, no. Not a structure. Right. And that, and that is the existing language. So that, yes. that's not doing something new. That's, yeah. that's duplicating what already appears in the bylaw. Right. Okay. So you're saying that right now, if let's say I had, uh, I was renting a small part of my property for commercial storage that I could convert it into a doggy daycare. No, no. Well, that's. Uh, Change. I've got a non-conforming use. I'm trying to work. Nope. Okay. Thank you. We have an 30 public hearing. Sure. In order to get your recommendations yep. and your report into the booklet that goes out to all the voters, I uh, just ask that Chris get the, the proposed motion with these amendments to me by tomorrow, along with an explanation of what the substantive change is in a, in a sentence or two, so that we can advise the voters in the booklet that they will have in their hands in, a, in another week or two. So mm -hmm. we will, I can do that. We will see to it. Thank Keep you. Keep that email. Thank you. Thanks all. All right. We have an 830 public hearing wireless telecommunications special permit, 559 Newtown Road, singular AT&T site plan modification. Just the last one of the evening. Waiting for the fee. Did we get the fee card? Until they get the fee. Okay. Okay. Um, public hearing, wireless communications, special permit, 559A New Newtown Road. The Town of Littleton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, April 9th, 2015, at 8 30 p.m. in room 103 of the Shatter Street Town Hall, 37 Shatter Street, to consider the application of special permit pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 8, 40A, and the Code of the Town of Lincoln Zoning, Wireless Telecommunication Towers and Facilities, Section 173 through 128, uh, 173, 128 through 173, 33. Property is 559 Newtown Road, Map U30, Parcel 5A. Property owner is Town of Littleton Water Department. Applicant is New Cellular, Wireless PCA LLC. The applicant is seeking a special permit under the Wireless Telecommunications and Facilities Bylaw to allow the installation of 
up to 12 panel antennas, related equipment, and associated improvements at the 155A, at the 555A Newtown Road water tank site. Application and plans can be viewed at the planning board and town clerk's office during their business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed plan should appear at the time and place designated Richard Crowley Clerk. Let the show begin. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> A little light uh, meeting. <laughs> my name is Michael Dolan. I'm from the law firm of Brown Rudnick in Boston. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, New Singular Wireless PCS LLC, by and through its manager, AT&T Mobility Corporation, essentially AT&T. Um, AT&T has an FCC license, a copy of which uh, we enclose with our application to operate a wireless telecommunications network throughout the country and including in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. As uh, part of the build out of its network, AT&T is seeking to install a wireless antenna facility at this subject property at 559 Newtown Road, which is uh, owned by the um, Town of Littleton Water uh, Department. And as demonstrated in the radio frequency engineer's report and coverage uh, maps included with our application, this proposed facility would help AT&T fill it a, uh, a hole in its network. Specifically, this facility uh, would help provide coverage to AT&T customers within the town of Littleton, especially along Newtown Road, Harwood Avenue, portions of Route 2, and the surrounding neighborhoods. So what we're proposing here is a, uh, it would consist, the facility would consist of a 15-foot extension to the existing 100-foot lattice tower currently situated on the property. Um, AT&T is proposing to attach 12 panel antennas to that extension at a center line height of 109 feet. And AT&T will also be installing related cabling and ground equipment within the existing compound and uh, that compound is currently surrounded by a six-foot chain link, six-foot high chain link fence. As for why we picked this site, uh, after having identified the hole in its network, as is customary practice, my client first looked to see if there are any existing structures upon which it could locate its antennas. Uh, we're pleased that we identified the existing uh, tower at the property um, and to learn that through a minor extension of that structure we could attach our antennas and fill our network uh, hole. This is good news from a land use planning perspective that we're not proposing a new structure uh, in this area and likewise uh, this is a, uh, a good situation for the Littleton uh, Water Department in that the lease payments we make will uh, uh, provide revenues to that uh, entity. Due to sight lines, um, tree canopies, and the surrounding conservation land in that area, uh, this addition or extension to the tower should be of limited visibility. Um, we included with our application some photo simulations, which we believe demonstrate uh, the fact that this would be a, a, a minor, uh, have a minor visual impact. Um, there's already a, uh, in addition to the tower, there's, al there's already a water tank, as you all know, out at that property, a very sizable one. So uh, for the reasons set forth in our application, we're respectfully asking this board uh, for a special permit and site plan approval. And we can answer any questions you may have. What about the at t tower that's currently on... Um Behind uh, Yaps Farm, the big, the big the one Newtown Hill. Yeah, that that one, the antennas, uh, th that that facility does not provide the coverage we would need. Um, that would be provided from this location. The, any antennas there wouldn't be able to propagate for for far enough to give us coverage in the area we have this hole in our network. How, how far do you have to propagate? Uh, we can, there's a number of factors that can go into how far the signal will propagate, whether it be terrain um, uh, and things like, you know, foliage, things like that. But typically it's a, between a mile and two, a mile or two. It just seems weird because this site is like a mile away. And it's a lot taller than what you're proposing right. now. Why? Why doesn't this? Yeah, work and, and 
quite frankly, uh, don't you own it? Or, or, do you want to? They just sold it. Oh, they just sold it. <laughs> They sold the tower. That's the tower. Which one is this? Which one is this? What is he talking about? AT&T tower, are you selling? Yeah, the AT&T. Honest, the deck that sold? This one to the north. Okay. This is a new tower. No, but I mean... That goes down five stories in the ground, doesn't right. it? Right. Yeah, that used to be the old Cold War. That was all the, the defense department stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I used to play up there as a kid and then watching them build it. <laughs> that explains a lot. Are you, uh, are you on that tower now? Yes, we're on that tower right now, correct? We're on that tower, correct? Yes. Yes. We're on that one. So, yeah, you own that tower, right? Yes. That's your right. tower. So, I, there's nothing we can do there that can get our signal out far enough to cover this new area. To the west? That's your dead spot? It's actually to the south. Right? South. Right. See, no, I would. Oh. That's part of did, you, did they sell the tower? No. Mary? I had heard that the property was sale, for sale. I don't get yeah. the sale information. So what elevation so are you at the alternative if at you the don't Newtown Hill? Hill? Excuse me? What elevation are you at Newtown Hill now? You're at 100? The, the, the existing tower is 100 feet. No, no, no. The, the AT&T tower right. on... Uh, 112. 112. Okay. And going up higher, the, you've looked at all the other options on that tower. It doesn't work. That's why you have to go to That's this correct. tower. Okay. Cause what What's the actual uh, mean elevation? Not not of off the ground, From but the of data. the uh, when you compare the two towers. What What is the difference in in in, in elevation based on sea level? I don't know the elevation, the AGL uh, above ground level for that other facility. I know that obviously, uh, if that you know, were that our tower, and we could do something there to uh, increase our coverage to cover this area, that's something we would we would do. Our engineers have looked at that and have determined that there's no way to fill our coverage gap by doing anything with that facility. And the coverage gap is where. <clears throat> if you look at the, um, it's going up. Yeah, it's in, it's in, in uh, tab five, yeah. you can see in those coverage maps. The first coverage map included in the application shows our covered current coverage, and right in the middle of that map, you'll see something that says MA thirty five seventy right near Newtown Road. That that's where we're proposing this facility. And you can see by the gray area on this map, that's where we don't have uh, sufficient coverage. Where, where it's green, we do have sufficient coverage. And then if you go to the second uh, coverage map entitled Proposed uh, LTE Coverage in Littleton, Littleton Mass, uh, you'll see from the blue area what we would get from this proposed facility. Thank you. Oh. Um, is there any abutters here, anybody in the audience that has an issue with this? In the past, there have been people, such as where Charlie Howe is, mm -hmm. that has a sight line. It looks pretty odd with things sticking out the side. Yeah, he, he was... So I had a concern. I, I assume abutters have been notified about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, the, the tower does cover a lot of it. If you, if yeah. You probably know how to see it. Our high, your highest one right now is at 100 feet from ground level on a, attached to the tank now. It's not, it's not attached to the tank. It's a separate tower. It's a lattice tower yeah. behind it. Okay, and that is at 100 feet now. Correct. And you're proposing to go up nine more feet. Fifteen. Fifteen. But the center line of the antenna will be nine feet up on at 109 feet. That I may have confused you with that reference. Yeah. And do you go out? And how big is yeah. this? How big is this bugger? What's it look like? They're in the photo simulations at tab. Uh, no tab. Coke, Pepsi. No tab. It's not this one. Well, that's at the one. tab 13. Oh, that's one. Tab which one? 13. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's the way it's going to look or the way it is. That's Do we charge these, these people by the foot? What is their fee? What they haven't paid yet? 
Excuse me? You showed up here and you didn't show up, pay a fee yet? Or they did pay the fee? Hmm? They, they paid the application fee for the special permit, um, but not the same yeah. kind of fee yet. Okay, I just made, uh, so you're just raising everything. Come with your wallet next time. Yes. Putting this array in up. In oh, okay. We're talking about the one that's out in the yeah. woods. Uh, yeah, he's right. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. So this will be the new look. There's no issue. No issue with this. I don't really have to be so. Just looks like and making sure the neighbors have been I have one, notified. One, um, one request or one question. On the old tower, you got these these massive um, things that that aren't being used anymore. You know, the antennas that were there from like the, the 50s or 60s. Are they, uh, when, when are they going to be removed? Because so we had a proposer in here, oh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, that wanted to put antennas on that tower. And, uh, and so we asked them, well, if you put new antennas, aren't you going to remove the old? And they said, well, no, we don't own the tower. Well, now we've got the owners of the tower here. So is it, what, what was your schedule of, of removing those old antennas? Uh, I, I don't know uh, what is on that tower or what the plans are for the removal. I can tell you that any, uh, you know, any antennas not being used, from my experience, have been routinely removed. These are the old horns from back in the 60s. And the what the developer, to, what the AT&T told us years ago when mm -hmm. he proposed the first is that they can't take the horns out because it will, it will, um, you stay the tower. it will alter the structure of the okay. tower. So uh -huh. that's why they can't take it out. It's part so of it the structure. balances it. Yeah. So that's why they never came out. And, so, and I, we've left it at that. This has nothing to do with, with AT&T on this tower. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's why they couldn't take it out. Because it would compromise the structure. Anyway, does it, does the board have any problems with the, with? Uh, well, there's no neighbors here as long yeah. as they pay their well, fees. I don't have a problem. Oh, we got one. I just had, uh, it's not a problem at all. But I believe that these fees will go to open space preservation. I was wondering if you have any idea what the additional fees for the tower would be. Um, yeah, I did get a copy of the lease agreement with the water department. Um, Fifteen hundred dollars a month to start, and it mm -hmm. es escalates from there. And according to the town meeting vote, when this tower location was approved, um, the fees do go to the open space fund. Mm -hmm. right. you, you were going to send us the, I never did see the spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, it's in your packet. Yeah, we do have it. Yeah, there uh, we go. I didn't see it. Yeah, because you got the broker. Because it's folded. Right. It's there. Okay. Does the board have any problems with this? No. No. I mean, I'll have to take a motion to approve yeah. the, ex you still have to go to the ZBA for the right. actual extension of it. Right. right. I'll obtain a motion to approve the ATT proposal for the so moved. for the tower at 100 and with the add 15 feet of it and, right. the, and the arrays at 109. So, so moved. Second. Yep. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank now this, you all very much. Now this special permit is good for two years, right? And then they're back in front Ten of us. Ten years. Five years. Five. Five years. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night. You know, Marlon, we, um, we need to think about, I'm going to throw this one on a little now. We're going to propose talking. commercial on the ground level of our equipment shelter. Good one. That's, that's a good one. Um, you got to read the vertical and the horizontal. I wanted to yeah. run away from that one. Good luck with that at the next meeting. Yes. I think my... Fall town meeting. Now that guy's an attorney, right? Yeah. No, yeah. Hey, can you leave your card? Your first one I found with a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, I'm funny. It's after nine, uh, it's gonna get ugly. All right, well, we have the uh, we have decided, but one other thing I wanted to talk about, Martin, maybe in the fall we could ad we could address the monies coming from the cell towers. That was something we did almost 20 years ago, and maybe it's time that. I asked that the last time. Recreation might get some a, well, piece, a bigger ago. piece of that. That yeah. was a town meeting. It was town. Right. Michael Nup did it. We vote, right. we, we wrote the bylaw. We got the revenue stream coming in, and it was decided to, to earmark most of that money to, to open space. Mm -hmm. Now maybe it's time to start thinking about giving it up to other entities in the town of Littleton other than just open space, since yeah. we've done such a good job with open space. Maybe back, maybe... CPC, housing, and then double the double the money. Stuff like that. So maybe by fall time, well, that's we, a should, difficult we should do that CPC that. and okay, double your money. I don't know where that's going to go. Do we uh, have the plans to sign, Mark, to endorse? Everything's all set? 
Oh, here, you can have this back. This is, they pay for that. You want to take it home and, and read it? No. Some light reading? No. <laughs> Where is that? The, can I have this? Is this the Sanderson property? Yeah, that's, a, that's a wild one. <coughs> no shit. 2025, that's, that's turf fields right there. What's it, what a million, million five, million four, yeah. 87? Is that right? It's an easy three turf field. Yeah. Yep. So all that money there is going where presently? Some of the Board of Health, I mean, the highway, to, uh, the water department gets some. Conservation land. Most of it goes to conservation. Isn't Littleton like 60% conservation land now? Uh, according to this, yeah. We're close. We already have 60% of Littleton designated towards conservation. Yeah. Well, well that 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 all right. Land. Can we just, do you want us just to sign that's, a mileage? That's a good amount. Copies? That's nice. Please. So, Paul's been waiting for you. Um, he's looking Patiently? for... <laughs> Absolutely. Fire away. Looking for you to endorse the um, subdivision covenants, oh, the two sorry. subdivision covenants, and the, the plans. Um, they're stamped. They were signed by town clerk this morning. Um, all ready to go. Go. That's signed. Uh, can we start? Please. Please. That's all that's left? One at a time. That's, it. that's all you can The plans, just hold on. right. The plans need the black pen. Uh, yeah, we we last these. time we did this. I have to come back to them. You're going to make a couple of copies and bring them back to us so we don't have to try and pay for copies? Well, they no. brought paper copies with them in, in that pile. Oh, the paper copies in there. Are we going to send the papers tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's all one place. Well, no, so like that's a pot. Like, you know what I mean? Piece. And um, Paul and Town Council both you agreed on the form for the covenant. No. Look, I want, so this is, yeah, so I have them all. You just them all. Really? Yeah. This That's how we missed them the last time. Just one page? It's, uh, just put the, I put the signature page at the, at the uh, top of the pile, make it easy. That's right. How many paper ones do we sign? Uh, all of them that are there. Um, if you want to... Come in and do it another time, that'd be fine if you don't want to wait. That's up to no, we'll just do it right now. We're all standing here. You want them anyway. Right? Nothing else to do, right? You're awesome. Yeah. We're going to go to the Board of Health on Tuesday, and they might approve our nitrogen loading restriction, which will be the last step in this whole thing. Why don't we spread them out, by the way, so that you know, yeah. somebody else can be signing with somebody <laughs> else is signing? That's what I said. Well, yeah, do the mylars all one place and do the paper somewhere else. I waste two papers people. mixed in with it. They're underneath it, aren't they? I guess. I'm almost done. <laughs> These are all about mylars. Oh, you got somewhere to be? Drinking. <laughs> then while you're waiting, Dealing with you the, the covenant. Yeah, you can sit, go inside the covenant. Yeah. Stop to just these two. Yeah, a lot of land. Right? A lot of pages. Well, if we find it, you're signing with John Penn. It's black, it's legal. Yeah. Somebody could. <laughs> Probably gonna run out, though. We're still on um, Candy Cam. Yeah. Right yeah. I can't believe we're you the most that. watched on demand. <laughs> Apparently, ours is one of them. Is it for the comedy value of it? Or is it, it, it sure is. Got to be. be for the. Uh, it's just me. I keep the last thing. So we should be getting some sort of residual. Yeah. Thing. It's like Seinfeld gets. Right. Double your pay. That's what we should be getting. Mm -hmm. Must watch TV. Mm -hmm. Can we shut them? Then we're done with this. This is the only. Um, you could close the meeting no, I, because I, you're just... I'll let you a motion to close the meeting so we can shut TV off. You want to suck the minutes? Huh? Oh, yeah. What about the minutes? Does anybody have any issue with the minutes? I do. I added a change to one uh, statement I made. And so what, what's that change? So it'll be... Excuse me. Um, it's a change to a statement I made. Right. Well, I was actually so concerned about saying that the issue came up. Uh, I'm so curious what change you're suggesting. It wasn't clear in the minutes that I wanted to be sure that the that the driveway that uh, I recommended putting a berm up on uh, protect 
the um, and the reason for that berm was to protect the downhills uh, uh, resident uh, from uh, from runoff. And uh, there's nothing in here that says that, that sure. the, is noting the, uh, the fact that I had a concern that there would be runoff and that there was no protections oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's go. I wanted no, that in the records. Okay. okay. So, so, even though we didn't vote in favor, we want to accept the minutes as, uh, as, as amended. amended. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a so move. A short amendment here. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The minutes accordingly, or do you want Where me to My notes. Oh, well, we do you wouldn't mind giving me notes that We have to, uh, get um, more uh, well, we know we have to get all the, the uh, septic permits done. Okay, and just and on then, the page that it's on is on? Um, yeah. We have to offer to the town of the 60 yeah, the Max, uh, yeah, the Max comment on that page. Mm -hmm. Oh, so while I'm sure it's going to be okay. a statement, I had concern about the point. The reason for the reason I wanted to see the Are you marketing this now? Is that no, what you're no, no, we can't do it until we have all the septic permits in place. The new yeah, here, 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 that's, that's <laughs> yes, we have no contingencies in the purchase and sale agreement. Didn't exist mm -hmm. before. And then the town gets right for the first refusal to buy the property below. No, happen in June, I would guess. So have a special town meeting in Fourth of July week to buy. <laughs> sure, we'll use the cell phone money. Complain about securities regulations. This. Yes. <laughs> hey, can we shut it off now? We're done. Um, you've returned. I entertain a motion to close the, the meeting. We've, we've approved the minutes and everything else. I'll we'll just sign. Yeah. Uh, I'll second. Are we done? We're done. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Right. Uh, we want to wish you. Do you take all this game? Done. Goodbye. Yeah, so, so why, why do you feel the need to try to control the board? I'm just, I'm just wishing you.